What's up everybody, it's Sean here, and I'm back today to give you guys my review of the Nocta and Nike Hot Stub Air Terra in this white colorway. Today's video is brought to you by Soul Savvy. Soul Savvy is a membership-based community of like-minded, passionate sneakerheads with a true love for shoes. And as a member of Soul Savvy, they give you the information, the tools, and the resources you need to be able to buy the shoes you want for retail. So I've been a member of Soul Savvy pretty much since they started a few years back and having such a busy lifestyle, the thing I love most about Soul Savvy is it gives me that one central place so I know exactly what's releasing, when and where. And as a member, they gave me tools such as add to cart links, training sessions to hone your skills to make sure you're able to cop those shoes that you want, a member only store where they sell shoes only for retail, and most recently they introduced something called Soul Savvy Assist. So this is a Chrome plugin and it autofills your information, your credit card information, all that stuff. So all that's left for you to do on the website is to click buy now. So if you guys are interested to learn more about Soul Savvy and potentially be a member, I'll add a link down in the description box below so you guys can check it out and learn more. So this in my hand is a very controversial, but it's still the very highly anticipated debut signature sneaker from Drake under his Nocta line with Nike. These released on March 3rd for a price of 180 US dollars or 235 Canadian dollars. And the colorway for this specific pair is white, chrome and topaz gold. Alongside this white colorway, they also dropped a black pair as well. But between the two, in my opinion at least, it was not even a question, this white one was easily the better pair. So Drake and his line Nocta have been teasing this shoe for a while now. And I think to say that the reception before the shoe actually released was lukewarm at best. A lot of people were saying that it looks like a K-Swiss and a Fila shoe got together and had a baby. And it just seems like the general consensus, especially when you consider the fact that this is the first Drake collaboration with Nike that wasn't just a simple swap of colorway on a Jordan, for example. And this is a brand new silhouette coming from the brand. Either way though, we know Drake is immensely popular, especially here in Toronto, so it was not a surprise at all that this shoe sold out instantly. Either way though, let's dive straight into the details and I'll give you guys a closer look. So first off, here's a quick look at the box. This design is heavily inspired by those retro Nike boxes, except instead of orange and this natural cardboard finish, on the right side it's entirely done in this reflective 3M finish. As for the shoe itself, my initial thought was that the silhouette and design of this shoe is clearly heavily influenced by styles from the late 90s. So unlike a lot of modern day shoes where they have a lot of fuse, a lot of mesh, and just a lot of synthetic overlays, for this pair it's predominantly constructed out of a very premium leather. So you can see on the toe box, this leather has a very nice tumbled look to it, and right above this we have the Nike swoosh done in this chrome finish. The sides of the shoe are done in this quilted fashion, and running down the sides we have these oval shaped perforations, and underneath this, we have a layer of reflective 3M. The top eyelet is done in this chrome or silver colored finish, and then on the lateral side towards the heel, we have another chrome swoosh. Moving downwards on either side of the heel, we have a stiff reflective 3M overlay, which is done in this white colored finish, but this has a thick rigid feel to it, which adds structure and support for the back end of the shoe. Overlaid on top, we have this arc shaped cutout of leather, which again is done in white, and running down the center of the heel, we have these six white colored dots, along with this jeweled hexagon with G-Tech branding. Turning our attention back to the center, so looping around the middle of the shoe where the tongue is, this is covered in a layer of reflective 3M. And underneath this, we have these nylon eyelets, which are partially hidden from view unless you look at the shoe from the side. Intertwining through this, we have these rope style laces, and underneath the laces, we have the tongue. So the majority of the tongue is constructed out of this white colored nylon, but we have this spoon shaped overlay of leather running down the center, and this is constructed out of that same very tumble white colored leather. Surrounding the outer edge, we have another layer of that reflective 3M in white, and at the top in the center of the tongue, we have this Nocta branding. One thing to note is that the tongue is connected to the rest of the body of the shoe using these two elastic cords, so this really helps to give more of a snug and locked down fit. Moving on to the insoles, so these come with their standard foam line insole. It's finished in this light blue colored finish on top, and we have Nocta and Nike co-branding stamped on the heel in white. So the tooling of the shoe is taken from the Air Terra Humara 99. So this is constructed out of this white colored foam and encapsulated underneath the forefoot but not visible to the eye, we have a zoom air unit for cushioning. And underneath the heel, we have this air unit and you can see that the pillars of the air unit are done in this gold colored finish. And on the medial side, you'll see on the foam itself, we have these six repeating swooshes running across. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, so the outsole here has a very trail or ACG vibe to it. This is constructed out of a combination of white and gold colored rubber. We have a very aggressive traction pattern running throughout. And in the middle, you'll see we have this small sliver of TPU, which is done in this iridescent finish. And this helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. 
So that pretty much breaks down all you need to know about the look and the construction of this shoe. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering how do these fit? And overall, I feel like they do run true to size in a snug way. So I'm a true size 10 slightly on the wider side. I picked these up in a size 10. And again, I feel like they fit me true to size, but they are a little bit snug on the forefoot. So just looking at the overall silhouette, in my opinion, it almost seems like it's a bit wider on the back and it tapers down and gets a bit more narrow on the forefoot. So while the length of the shoe was absolutely perfect, there was just about a finger's width between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe. I felt a little bit constricted from a width perspective right about here. So if you have narrow, normal, or slightly wide feet, and you don't mind that snug one-to-one -one fit, then true to size should definitely be the way to go. But if you have really, really wide feet and you don't like that one-to-one -one sock like feel, then you might wanna consider going up a half size and just dealing with the extra length. Like I mentioned before, the tongue is partially connected to the body of the shoe. So this really adds to that whole lockdown and supportive feel. Moving on to the comfort. So I gotta say this shoe wasn't that bad from a comfort standpoint. First impression is that it is a little bit on the heavier side, but I gotta say the inclusion of the Zoom Air was very welcome. You can definitely feel that underneath the forefoot when you walk around in these, but I felt like the heel with the air unit was a little bit more clunky. And maybe it's just a matter of me having to break these in a bit more, which I suspect might be the case. But straight out of the box, the transition from heel to toe felt a little bit clunky and a little bit awkward. With that said though, the overall step in comfort isn't bad at all. I wouldn't say that it's a super comfortable shoe, but it's definitely not bad either. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship. So first off, material quality, I thought it was solid. The leather specifically felt pretty decent to the touch, and you can tell that it's a genuine cut of leather, not that same trashy plastic cut of leather that we get, for example, on those GR Nike Dunks. So again, this kind of reminds me of shoes from the late 90s and early 2000s, and I definitely appreciate that they utilize leather on this specific pair. But in terms of the overall craftsmanship and the build, I would say there were some noticeable flaws. Specifically, some glue stains, especially where the midsole connects to the upper. And you can tell there was obviously some areas that were a little bit rushed, or the factory just didn't have that high level of quality control. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. Obviously, part of the draw behind the shoe is, of course, it's ties to Drake. And I'd be a liar if I told you guys I'd still pick these up if this was not affiliated with Drake and it was just sitting on a shelf at Foot Locker. I'm a decent fan of Drake's music and I'm from Toronto where he's from as well. But more importantly, I was just very curious to see how these were in hand. I'm still not totally in love with this shoe. I just can't shake that image of this being a K-Swiss and Fila clone. Still, there definitely are redeemable qualities about this pair, namely the quality of the leather and the overall colorway isn't bad at all. However, I think I'm good with having just this one colorway in my collection, and unless they wow us with some future colorway, I think my road stops here for this hot step silhouette. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Nocta Nike Hot Step Air Terra in this white colorway. What are your overall thoughts on this silhouette and this color? And for anyone watching, did you guys manage to grab a pair of these? Did you take an L, or was it a straight pass for you? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, Check me out on Twitter at Sean.go and visit my website at SeanGo.ca. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one.